it's it's the digital form of withholding love but like you still get to feel like you've given them the love because you have they mm-hmm. just don't know it's from you <clears throat> yeah so it's really just the ultimate power move mm-hmm. yeah no i like that that's good yeah oh hi there <clears throat> welcome to the video reformation podcast welcome uh i'm ben oliver i'm justin plant Uh, We're the co-founders of Storyboard Media and your guides to practicing effective video for business. We're like the Doc Brown to your Marty McFly on his quest to get back to the future. Before we jump into our topic today, which is going to be uh, B2B storytelling, yeah. De- demystifying, demystifying, destigmatizing. Is, it, we, yeah, so we'll we'll figure this out before we release this. But Demysti- it isn't. demystifying is right. It's just it's just or partly right. It's just not an SEO friendly word. So I don't want to oh, really? like lead with it. Okay. Destigmatizing, re-regularizing. Re-regularizing is probably the best way to put it. It's like it went way too far as a. Yeah, our our goal with this episode is to is to like when people hear storytelling in a marketing or business sense instead of like their eyes glazing over like oh yes this is what we mean by storytelling when we're talking about um before jumping in a little housekeeping of course um keep the episode topic uh requests and suggestions coming in uh we appreciate hearing from our audience um have gotten a few have them on the list of future episodes um Again, we can keep coming up with topics, but if it's not what you want to hear about, what's the point? Um, and uh, it's unfortunate to announce that we we um, we were not able to carry over our last sponsor. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have a new sponsor this episode. Okay. Um, as long our, as they keep coming. Yes, yes. I mean, fortunately, our, our sponsorship department, while they're terrible at retaining clients, they're fantastic at generating Sign new opportunities new, yeah. for us. So... Um, our sponsor this episode is COVID-20. So stick around and, and hear that spot later on in the uh, piece. I, I, is it I, COVID? I don't is know. it 19? The, the old one, COVID-19. Is that 19 because of the year 2019? When yes. It, okay, broke out. Yes. Um, and I haven't, even, I haven't even seen the copy for the ad yet. So I don't know if it's a movie or ah. a, a, a game show. I all I know is our our sponsor is COVID twenty, and at some point during our discussion, uh, we'll have the copy and, uh, and I'll break and, okay. and and read that probably okay. for the first time um, live on air. Okay, yeah, that'll right. be my first read. Well, that's a treat because sometimes you know yeah. we've had them for weeks and had time to practice or. Yeah. Or we sometimes we're going into a studio or visit the factory or right. yeah 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 this i know nothing about I'm so excited. i am just as excited as all of you are um to hear from our new sponsor covid 20. um okay so demystifying re-regularizing unstigmatizing destigmatizing a b2b storytelling to me i have a very <clears throat> Um, I have a very like visceral reaction when I come across a blog title or a podcast episode or whatever that's like storytelling and B2B. Like, or like... Which is why to, we decided uh, to do this. Right, right. But that's why that first word is so important. Right. Right? It's, it's like uncluttering, unpacking this idea of storytelling in, in business conversation. Mm-hmm. But it, it used to be like... It became a thing in like the 2010. In in yeah, it was like it, it's. I actually did some Google Trends research on it, and and it's like 2013 to 2015. So let, let me see. I, um, storytelling as a Google Trends search term increases steadily from like 2013 to to 2015, and then between 2015 and the middle of 2016, it jumps almost seven times. So I, I think that's where, like, in the kind of 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, everybody understood what everyone was talking about when they said, how to elevate your marketing, use mm-hmm. storytelling, mm-hmm. right? It was a conversation about how to actually use story instead of, here's a features list yeah. of my product or whatever. At a time when, when data was becoming a huge part of marketing and, and, and because also, it was now accessible. And, and I think there was, a, there was a content movement there, right? The, yeah. the whole yeah. The whole... You know, web 2.0, blog posts, regular and content, all the social the oppor- social media opportunities, democratization of video. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's mm-hmm. where we came in to this whole industry is once DSL the DSLR revolution, <clears throat> really. 
But it was that like like 2015 to 2016. All of a sudden, it was it just like it didn't jump the chasm. It like jumped the shark. Yeah. Like it just went from a thing that that marketers use to differentiate their brand and how they talked about their brand to something that everybody was saying everybody we should we should like, be doing. It was just a word they'd stuff in like a keyword that they would stuff into stuff like articles or whatever just to get yes. clicks. Right. Which is not why we have it in the title of this. You told me that otherwise. <laughs> oh, no, you're right. You're <laughs> you right. Well, no, no, no. I I I think it's okay. I, I I didn't mean that that we would get more views because we have storytelling in the title of uh-huh. the episode, and that's why again I think this first word of this episode title is so important because I want it I don't want people to gloss over the word storytelling in it, and I don't want it to reach people just because it has the word storytelling in it. Mm-hmm. I want this to be the thing where people are finally like, oh, good, somebody actually breaking down what we meant in the first like place. Like a return to storytelling. Yes. Yes, yeah. because I, I to me it's cringeworthy. Yeah, when I see it, it almost makes the source less credible. Uh, yeah, like even if it was from Content Marketing Institute or Marketing Profs or something like that, that I have a lot of trust in um, as a curator of of marketing type content. Uh, when I see story, I'm just like, I'm not going to read that because there's nothing new in that. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time. We're doing a podcast about it? Well, at the same time, we are called Storyboard Media. Mm-hmm. And that was a deliberate effort in late 2013 when we settled on the name. I think it was it was late summer, early fall of 2013 when we, when we landed on the name. Um, but we landed on the name because I was literally went to, like, a Scrabble site for words that included story mm-hmm. in them. And then we just kind of added media to a whole bunch of those things. So it was something we and sought I, out. <laughs> we weren't just jumping on a trend either, because right. it was it was barely it, a trend. It was the front. I mean, this is we're talking about late 2013, and it was that kind of slow, slow rise from 2013 to 2015, and then in 2016 mm-hmm. it was up here. I had just maybe in 2012, 2011, I had I had finished um, the hero's journey or. Um, Hero of the Thousand Faces, mm-hmm. which is a uh, is kind of an essential like basis for understanding comparative mythology and like how stories evolved. Is that Joseph Campbell or is it about Joseph? It's Campbell? Joseph Campbell. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then you know, and I was like, holy shit! This this is like the, the key that unlocks everything. And uh, and so I started getting more and more into that and listening to podcasts or audiobooks by Joseph Campbell. And then and all of a sudden we were faced with. Well, what should we name our company? And I know that you were just as interested in it as I was, yep. and and we were both very highly influenced by this. So we knew Story had to be a part of it. And now, ever since maybe the day we launched, I've wanted to change the name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially because of that cringeworthiness. Yes. So here we are. So here we are to reclaim the idea of Story. Yeah. Um, from a a business communication standpoint um what is storytelling what is story i mean i want to talk about how i want to give listeners and viewers practical opportunities to start to leverage storytelling Mm -hmm. in their content but I think we need to define what storytelling is and what a story is mm-hmm. first. I yeah. think there's a lot of different ways it can be defined. When I when I started thinking back to okay, what are stories? Do I, we talk about the essential elements um, or why they're important or whatever? Yeah, I I end up at the same place every time, which is like stories are a part of human nature. Before we ever wrote anything down. We had verbal mm-hmm. communication, verbal, um, it was just all verbal. We talked. Yeah. And so. Generations um, passed knowledge and wisdom and, and history yeah. on verbally. Yep. Yeah. And there was great knowledge being passed down from generation to generation through storytelling. And the, the reason why is because it was a great way for people to remember a lesson. And so, you know, sometimes that's converted into song and in, in, in poetry to, mm-hmm. to help even cement that a little bit more. <clears throat> um, but all those, like even 
row, row, row your boat probably it comes from some kind of like, I don't know if there's other verses or whatever, but those... Row, row, row your boat? Yeah. I'm um, not, I'm not familiar. I don't know, I feel like a bunch of those kids' songs... Yeah. ...were, are, have stories in them, and they're meant to pass down lessons, and I think, you know, they've been, either been perverted or shortened, and and uh, we may not have that as, as much anymore, but... Um, but that is, to me, that's what stories is. It's a way to pass on a lesson. I think there's a key, and I think you could use the row, row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat? That's what it is? I'm not sure. I just uh, Googled yeah, that. Uh, yeah. um, is, I think there's a key element, and, and in, in preparing, God, like three weeks ago for this episode, um, I came across something called the National Storytelling Network. Mm-hmm. I think they're friends of the podcast. So, okay. Yeah. Um, which I didn't know was a thing, but apparently there's a national storytelling network, so go join it. One of the things that they, they have like five key elements to storytelling, and one of the most interesting to me... Storynet.org. There we go. Was imagination. So like their definition of storytelling is the interactive art of using words and actions, right? Tell and show, which mm-hmm. we talk about with video. This mm-hmm. is why we're talking about it. The interactive art of using words and actions to reveal the elements and images of a story while encouraging the listener's imagination. Mm -hmm. And that encouraging the listener's imagination part really encourages my imagination. Like, that really pinged with me. Stories, they are, it's it's a way to, like, hijack an audience. You, You, we've, we've done this before. Um, well, let me tell you a story. As soon as you hear those words, your brain switches off in the, into this like autopilot kind of mode. You put your pen down. Listening mode. You put your pen yeah. down. You kind of bring it. Okay, you lean in or whatever it is, but you, you become receptive and, and you allow that storyteller to occupy a part in your brain, just like comics do when they take you through mm-hmm. uh, a whole bit. Like you don't think they think for you. And so during that storytelling process, they're activating your imagination. Well, and, and, and row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. <clears throat> I imagine everyone has, as many times as you've heard it, you still get, like to me, I actually get like a cartoon, like, a, like an illustration, a children's book illustration image in my head mm-hmm. of a small boat being rowed down a beautiful blue stream Mm -hmm. you know with like two kids in it okay here here are some of the additional verses to row row your boat row 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 your boat gently down the stream if you see a crocodile don't forget to scream row 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 your boat gently down the river if you see a polar bear don't forget to shiver (laughs) row 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 your boat gently to the shore if you see a lion there don't forget to roar (laughs) okay maybe these aren't great lessons (laughs) no but but isn't isn't the visual scene building for you every time you hear mm-hmm. those new mm-hmm. right and so I'm not creating a statistic on this but anecdotally if a picture is worth a thousand words mm-hmm. right the words row 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 your boat gently down the stream it doesn't say it's a fast moving stream a slow moving stream mm-hmm. a clean stream a polluted stream but you create this world even in a single frame in your head that provides so much more information and context mm-hmm. and emotional reaction. And, and that's that's the imagination part of it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what so, I think also is so interesting about children's stories is it helps them develop a sense of, of kind of defining certain things but also expanding their own imaginations. Mm-hmm. So I imagine my vision of Row, Row, Row Your Boat is probably very similar to what I was picturing in my head when I would sing the song as a child. Mm -hmm. I don't know that, Yeah. but my guess is that's what pops into my head because that's what I was picturing back then. Um, And it's very accessible. And I think, and and maybe not to the the point of a song, but I think they're, they're, you know, when you think about storytelling as that, right? Providing enough information to get the viewer, reader, listener to start imagining what's going on, that's going to have more of an impact than a bulleted list of features on your new, you know, microchip Mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm interested in that because it's my job or whatever, Yeah, but I can't 
do anything with it after the fact. I'm probably not going to dream about it, right? I'm probably yeah, not going to, yeah. like, I need to provide my own. And I think there's a translation element there probably too. Um, like mental translation kind of. Like it helps me process the information because even though you just gave me auditory clues, I now have a mental visual component that helps me connect those things too. Yep. And it's a lot easier to get across when you're talking about rowing a boat or Mary having a little lamb or Jack and a beanstalk or whatever. Like, even as I'm just thinking of those off the top of my head, I have, like, the cover of that book mm -hmm. image in my head mm -hmm. um, that I'm almost building this world around it that yeah. isn't in the words that are stated. It's like what's... and I, I, I don't know, maybe it's the time to talk about it, but, like, so much of a story is, like, what you leave out also. Right? You're providing enough of a structure mm -hmm. for the imagination yeah, to yeah, fill yeah. in all yeah. of the... It's like, it's like the framing of a house, but then your imagination goes ahead and, and puts up all the walls and right. the windows and the paint mm -hmm. and, you know, all the fixtures and everything. And where the kids are going to play and where you're going to yeah. cook dinner and, yep. and what those meals will taste like. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go as far as you want. And if you, if you leave out all those details, someone can, can create that for themselves. So what does it take to tell a story? I think you have to provide a structure. You have to know which points you need to provide as structure. And, and then of course, think about what to leave out. So there's probably, I mean, I think one element of, of storytelling is, is the simplest story to tell is a chronological story. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's something that, that, that has a beginning, middle, and end. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't necessarily mean a three-act structure, although... That's where uh, that's I think it comes where from. where it comes from. But you, you <clears throat> need to start somewhere, go somewhere, and then what's the result of having gone there? Yeah. Row, row, row your boat mm -hmm. gently down a stream. Okay, I'm in a boat. I'm going down a stream gently, Right. Merrily, 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 merrily. I can see it on your face. It's right? all over your face, yeah. Is You're merry. Because I'm doing this, I'm now in a merry state. Mm -hmm. um, and then the results of that merry state. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> is no, that, not yours. The one, I should have thought of a better <laughs> nursery rhyme. Yes, and. <laughs> <laughs> um, the result of the merry state, which is so expressive on my face, is that Life ain't shit, right? I ain't got shit to worry about. You're not just pulling this out of your ass. You're grasping for... I am. <laughs> so whether that works or not, um, you know, a beginning, middle, and end is something that, that even if you don't say it's 5 a.m., our character gets out of bed. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just, you know, our character rises and brushes his teeth. Mm -hmm. Like, that, that, that leaves out enough kind of... That, like, we're starting a new cycle for this person, mm -hmm. if we're following a character, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then they're most likely, I mean, you know, we're not we're not using memento as the foundation yeah. of like, you know, storytelling. Mm -hmm. It is a way to tell a story. But but we're so used to just kind of going through our daily lives that a natural cycle is a day in the life. And I think that's sure. one of the way, one of the ways when we talk about how to utilize storytelling. I think day in the life is a fantastic example of a way to storytell in business conversations, right? Mm -hmm. Business communication. But there's there's a starting point, something happens. Mm -hmm. Hell, go back to go back to Doc Brown and Marty McFly, right? He goes back in time. He has to spend all of this energy and and you know go on this adventure to figure out then how to get back to where he's from. Mm -hmm. And then he finally gets there. Right? And so it it he, even though that's a time travel thing, which is probably another terrible example God, we're on fire today. <laughs> um, uh, it's it's got a place where it starts, things that happen as a result of that, and then a, a final solution mm -hmm. um, uh, of so there's you know, a, there's where a, that got. So we need a structure for a story. Yeah. If we edit out everything else that I said between that's a great question and you saying so we need a structure, just take my answer out altogether <laughs> on that. No, but I mean that is that is an important part. We need a structure. And, it, and oftentimes, 
like in Joseph Campbell, he, you know, he just kind of breaks down all the different elements. Um, you've got a structure. That structure is provided by, like, you're in this world that you're in today. Normal. This is normal. Yep. <laughs> yes, this is now normal. <laughs> this is your normal world. Then there's a problem. Mm-hmm. And that problem forces you or, or requests that you solve that problem. And then we're, we're, I had this pulled up somewhere. You go on some journey. And you go on some journey. A, a, a physical journey, an emotional journey. A, it could be a dream. A, yes. But you during that journey, you have to trip and stumble and fall. And, and I think technically before you go on the journey, you're also supposed to like say no. I'm yeah, the refusal out, of the call. Yeah. 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 Now, then the, you'll, you'll once, I mean, if you look into some of these steps, you'll realize that all of the best movies that have ever been written or, or, or books or whatever follow a very clear path. Um, but yeah, and the, that that stumbling, those tripping up, the falling, and then the sequ- uh, sequentially the winning of that, uh, solving that problem is where your lesson comes from. Mm-hmm. And you take that, that lesson back from that, that new world that you've just encountered, you bring it back to your normal world and gift that to either your audience or the people of your village or whatever it is, you bring that knowledge and that um, here's what to do in life kind of lesson. That So there's that beginning, middle, and end. It's starting in the today, you're in this, then you're in this new world, the, the middle, and then the end is you have a lesson back in the, in the real world. I don't want to get too meta about it, but I mean, if we go back to the beginning of our conversation about storytelling, you know, verbal story- storytelling from generation to generation to generation, <clears throat> the part of that that's trying to impart wisdom, the easier it is for them to, to show the less wise among their, their civilizations or whatever, that part of life is encountering struggle but by getting through that struggle and coming back to where you were, you're better for it. Yep. Your family is better for it. Your tribe is better for it. Whatever it is, mm-hmm. that that to me is almost an imparting of wisdom. Like I'm old, I've experienced shit, and so I'm gonna craft this story to tell my kids or mm-hmm. whatever that in, in something they can understand. And it's maybe it's not autobiographical, but there's some autobiographical elements. Like, man. You gotta go through the shit mm-hmm. because otherwise, like your life well, is pointless. I mean, it, like I like I totally get a village elder just wanting to say, "You'll be okay," mm-hmm. right? But that's not enough, right? Is is just take this advice and you'll be okay. A friend of mine was Fuck you, just old where man. you were. Fuck you, right? Yes, but a friend of mine <clears throat> when I was younger was just where you are right now. Yeah, and here's the journey he took, and here's where he ended up. That gives the listener some kind of sense of, oh yeah, I can do this. This is the normal part of life. I, it prepares you for yeah. that, you know, do you know that how, journey or whatever. How, how painful it is to be teething. You don't because you haven't in the longest time. How do you know? <laughs> but like, you have to go through that pain. Like, I think you have to go through some really shitty relationships in life to recognize what you do want out of a partner. Yeah. Um, and you, like, in, the only way to become a fully realized human being is to have gone through some shit. Mm-hmm. And then you like you have to go through the teething to become what you are intended to be. You go from your seed to that huge oak tree. You have and to. And that's go why the all pain. trust fund babies are psychopaths. Kind of, yes. <laughs> If I learned anything from Hollywood. But you're right. If you don't go through some shit, there's no growth. Yeah. And you remain a baby your whole life. That's okay. just Billy Madison, right? Yeah. But then once he starts to go through some shit, he becomes a better person. Yeah. So we've got structure. Uh, and like the, the, within that structure, there's the problem, the answer, and like, you know, the lessons. What else do we need for stories? We need characters. I think I, I wrote that down, but do we? Or I don't know. I was going to challenge that just for the sake of conversation. Well, I mean, I think it depends on how you define character, but I, I think, no, you don't have to. Just like how Memento tells a story 
backwards. Mm-hmm. You don't have to have a beginning, middle, and end like that. It does have a beginning, middle, and end in an end beginning and middle. Middle, middle, kind middle, of, middle, right? middle, middle. Yeah. End, beginning, end, middle. Um, but I think a character is is what gives... The character is, is the proxy for the listener. Mm-hmm. The right? hero is. Yes, your, your hero... Well, not not necessarily your hero because a lot of when you really get into storytelling, the reason they have multiple characters is because each character follows a certain kind, you know, archetype of person. Yeah. Also, and so, you know, like like Friends, right? The reason the 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 characters on Friends all have their own personality traits: extroverted, introverted, comedian, scientist, you know, dumb actor guy, you know, all, all of those characters are there not just to complement each other and be other people sitting on the couch mm-hmm. at Central Perk. They're there so that they represent the possible archetypes of the audience. So if I may... Because um, you've always wanted to be Aragorn. 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 You didn't really want to be Was he Frodo. in the later seasons of Friends? <laughs> um, Arag- but, you know, that, that's why... Or, God, probably the best is Sex in the City, right? The best. <laughs> The best show ever. We're changing the episode. <laughs> the best show ever is Sex and the City. Um, it's but, in the city. But Sex in the city. No, it's Sex and the City. Sex and the City. Yes. Okay. And and the city is what like New Yorkers call New York City. Yeah. Because they're so There's fucking no other, pretentious. Yeah. Um, maybe just lost our New York City audience. I don't know. Doubt it. We well, had one. To the two of you. Um, so Sex and the City. Everybody was either like, help me out here, a, a Charlotte or a Carrie or a oh, um, the brunette was Charlotte, right? Yeah, the the redhead Miranda, Miranda, or this is our promo right here, by Mr. the way, Mr. Big, or Mr. Big, or Aiden was an Aiden one of them. I think Aiden was a guy, huh. but. I mean, think about it. You know, all of the the women who watched that show would identify as. A Carrie or a Charlotte or uh, a Miranda mm-hmm. or a whoever the other one was, um, because they're written in to have different character types and and because certain certain people are are either see themselves or what they want to be in certain character types. Mm-hmm. So going back to the hero, the hero isn't necessarily the person that the entire audience is going to latch onto, but there are other people around them, a first officer, a you know, a subordinate, a, you know, whatever, the people around them that, that an individual watcher may, or, or reader, may attach to, <clears throat> and then they see the hero kind of through that person's eyes, too. So I don't, so there has to be a hero, but the hero doesn't necessarily represent everyone in the audience, I think. But to me, the characters are the proxy for the, the audience. Um, a, a great example, nerd alert, is Doctor Who. The companion is supposed to be, is not the hero of the show, but they're the human companion who follows this guy who can do anything, travel through time and Mm -hmm. space, but they're there to ask the questions of the doctor, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. Right? So they're there as the audience's proxy. So that the audience can understand. So I've never seen the show, but do you think the doctor is the hero? Yes. You think so? Yeah. Definitely. But See, people find themselves almost more arguing about who was the better companion than like who was the better doctor. Because what I was going to say is, all the examples of that you were just giving have been series, sure. and series, yeah, they should have a broad appeal. Mm-hmm. And you can take, you can do a show about Joey, and then do one about Rachel, and kind of mix that up because people do identify with some of those characters. But who's the hero in Friends? There, there, it's a series. There is no like. But central they're telling character. stories. Yeah, they are. So each each episode will have its own hero. Okay. Um, yeah, I could see that. Um, I don't, so I don't know. I was just I was trying to challenge. Like, can you write a story that doesn't have a hero? I don't know that you can. You have to have a character, and whether that's a tiger, right, or a, like a cartoon tiger, or. Uh, Billy. But, you know, I mean, one of the things is that the hero needs the guide. Yes. Right? So, so. But the guide doesn't have to be a character. That's true. 
That's where that's where it gets really interesting in B two B storytelling because I think you need a hero. We're also now mystifying B two B storytelling. <laughs> uh, you need a hero, but like so, some of those customer stories that we've done uh, back in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. In a lot, like if you look at Lord of the Rings, there's an enemy, but in some of these customer stories, there's no enemy, but there is a problem. Right. And that problem could be that there's not enough time to get their job done. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the, the threshold guardian, it may not be a, a character, but it might be the fact that they didn't have enough money to buy the Cadillac option from Company X. Mm-hmm. Um, so what did they do? They, um, they engaged with Company Y, who is the guard the guide or the the mentor the yoda mm-hmm. um the obi-wan the the, the doc brown the doc brown the, i mean the, yes this is, this is what we do at the exactly, beginning of every exactly. episode now yeah i think you need those two in b2b storytelling but i think you can get by without anything else i think that's my well that, that i mean that that's really that's really our next section right uh, j- Jumping from what is storytelling and what are the elements mm-hmm. of storytelling to how to use storytelling in B two B, I I don't I don't think there's any right answer for any of these, mm. right? You Especially need characters, d- but they don't have to be people. Yep. Right. You need a hero, but that doesn't have to be. But there's also anti heroes, right? Yeah. You need a beginning, a middle, and end, but you don't need to necessarily present them in that order. Mm-hmm. So let's tie off our what is storytelling conversation. And then jump into ways to use storytelling sure. uh, in, in B2B. And I think we've touched on this, but it's... I, I define art, right, as something that, something that elicits an emotional reaction. In episode 31, Ben yes. defines art. Ben defines art. I believe the generally accepted definition of art is... Um, you know, something that's created that creates an emotional response in the participant, viewer, right? The what, Whatever the art form is. But I think it, it gets some kind of emotional response. I think storytelling is specifically more about creating an, imaginar- an, an imagination response. So I know we've talked about providing structure, and, and, but I think there's more to talk about with, with what we leave out and what we allow, how we guide our viewers and listeners to certain ways without explicitly stating those details. Yep. And yet they find their way into stories. Humpty Dumpty is never described as an egg. No, it's not. Right? But most people picture Humpty Dumpty as like an egg. I have no idea where that came from. Yeah. But it's certainly not in the poem. Right? Yeah. So, so how do you as a as a creator how do you hint at certain things we so so the the shoot that we did earlier this week we created a mascot for a brand Mm -hmm. and one of the first things we did in the creative process was create that character's character bible Mm -hmm. right lay out her history Mm -hmm. um in a paragraph the powers she has i think i think we used like one slide in a presentation deck to say this is how old this person is, what her what her special powers her are, what her motivations are, whatever, and and we ended up using very little of those specific things. We even gave her a name, mm-hmm. Judy, but we never call her Judy mm-hmm. in the piece. She's referred to by that. I don't want to spoil it because I don't know when it's going to be announced, but or released. But like she is a character, mm-hmm. right? We're referring to her as like. You know, the Sandman, mm-hmm. not Judy. Yeah. But we know as the creators that her name is Judy, right? It happened to be Judy Hendrix, second cousin of, of uh, no, 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 not Hendrix. Um, Kravitz. Kravitz. Uh, second cousin of Lenny, of course. Um, but there are all of these details that are in there that helped us write for that character mm-hmm. that ended up being <clears throat> left out that I still think are going to come through. They're embedded. They're embedded in there, they're, even though they're not explicitly stated. Because <clears throat> one of the things that we were trying to do with this character is create kind of a fictional cultural icon. Mm-hmm. 
um, Tooth Fairy, Uncle Sam, uh, Santa Claus, mm -hmm. whatever, right? And whoa, 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 whoa. Let's reel that back a little bit. <laughs> Santa Claus. You meant to say the Easter Bunny. Also the Easter Bunny. But Santa Claus. Okay, hold on. Can we stop rolling for a second? No, I, I think we should capture this moment. Santa Claus isn't real. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, man. Do you think that there are eight magical reindeer that can actually fly through the air and Ooh. pull a sleigh full of all of the gifts for every capitalist child in the world? <laughs> And all of those presents can be delivered in one I've night? I've never seen him, but I have had a whole bunch of little men in my house. Well, around yes, but the courts have ruled on that, and you're not allowed to anymore. <laughs> um, on a very special episode of the Video Reformation Podcast, Justin learns there is no Santa Claus. There's, um, all, there's not one depiction of an un-egg... <laughs> They're all friggin' eggs. Going back to Humpty Dumpty, who is real, by the way. Uh huh. Is real. Um, where was I going with any of that? Does it even matter? Uh, Tip. So we were creating oh, yeah. a fictional cultural so, icon. Yeah, and so one of the things that we knew early on is that, that people create their own traditions and, and sub stories and all of these things around these kind of like central characters whether they're created by a marketing agency or a church or whatever like as we tell these stories to our children I think each family probably has their own little version mm -hmm. of it right but mm -hmm. but there, there's this kernel of of a foundation there mm -hmm. that enough structure was provided in like the character development of the Easter Bunny for over time, people to kind of like almost revert to a mean mm -hmm. <clears throat> for what the Easter Bunny is. Mm -hmm. So I imagine if you, I don't know when the when the idea of the Easter Bunny was was first put out there, but I imagine if you like graphed the the breadth of descriptions of the Easter Bunny, you know, they probably go real wide for a while, and then they just slowly come back more and more as mainstream yeah. media and commercial, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, all of a sudden, books are, see books are written and illustrated, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, there's this national campaign with an Easter Bunny. Oh, that's what the Easter Bunny looks like. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you don't really consciously, you know, but it just over time it becomes like this is who this character is. And so it's just fascinating to me how much we assign to those fictional characters when you think about how they started. There were like three basic pieces of information mm -hmm. but they were the right pieces of information that let the story build itself yeah. um, and I think and you can do that with characters and you can do that with your storyline right you can you can hit enough of the right bullet points you don't even have to hit A, B, C, D and E you can hit A, C and D and people can extrapolate that there was a point B in there and that there's a point mm -hmm. E afterward mm -hmm. so you don't have to cram everything in and in fact, you're probably going to let people, let people's brains ruminate on it more if you give them more space to fill because in Those the eight gaps. videos we shot <clears throat> in San Francisco, each of those were like a 45-minute interview mm -hmm. that ended up t becoming a, a minute 30 yep. story. Yep. And, and it's exactly right. We took out all the stuff that was not as necessary. It was necessary for that person to be able to tell their story. Mm -hmm. But for us to, to relay that, yep. we just took that DNA, that, that kernel, and, and passed that along. Yeah. I think it's a great example. Um, and it's like you said, that's where the imagination fills in the cracks. It becomes their story. It becomes their lesson. And, and people carry that on. And if you're doing it from a brand perspective, if you're creating a Geico Gecko or a flow from Progressive, that helps tremendously with brand recall mm -hmm. recognition mm -hmm. brand affinity because they associate those characters as a representation of your brand and you may even build your own stories in your own mind about those characters mm -hmm. that just deepens that connection with that brand and at companies well I, I didn't even think about it but Geico and, and Progressive are competitors mm -hmm. right direct competitors and so they're spending an awful lot of money and creative energy trying to create 
those characters that stick with you Mm -hmm. and that you develop a bond with subconsciously, probably even, Mm -hmm. to some level. Mm -hmm. And to them, that ultimately results in you spending money with them and not someone else. I mean, when when someone says flow, there's only one thing I think of. Yeah. And and I I just, I I have feelings about flow. Yes. (laughs) Feelings, yeah. But like in the little ge- the little gecko Geico, I just he seems huggable and lovable and cute. I'd want him on my dashboard with a little bobblehead mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah, yep. And it's <clears throat> fun to say gecko gecko. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, before we jump into practical ways to use storytelling in B two B, has the copy come through? Uh, I have just received in my inbox the copy um, for our new sponsor this week, COVID twenty. All right. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> COVID-20, I'm coming for the rest of y'all motherfuckers. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the world again, boom. Say goodbye to COVID-19 and hello to COVID-20. Dropping everywhere, winter 2020. Oh, there wasn't much there, but that packed a punch. It's frightening. I think we're all going to die. So is it? it's a different COVID? It appears to be... A different COVID. It's like, like COVID. While, while everyone was out because they couldn't go into the gyms, COVID went to the gyms, yes. got fucking jacked, jacked, and it's coming for all you motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. I'm it, so very specifically. I'm coming. No G. There's an apostrophe for the resta r e s t a y'all. Y apostrophe A L L motherfucker. So is this a threat? I'm coming for the rest of y'all motherfuckers. I think this is just is it a brand? An announce I you know it dropping everywhere winter 2020. It could be <clears> like <throat> Kanye's next album. Okay. Uh it could be a movie. So we're just building hype for something. And we don't even know. There's no website. It feels irresponsible of us. But they the check cleared. <laughs> I say <that>. Yes. <clears throat> it's called a running gag. <laughs> Um. All right. Well, thanks for sponsoring us, COVID twenty. Or not. Please spare me. Um. All right. Act three in our uh, episode here. How to use <clears throat> storytelling in B two B, and I think we started some of this discussion and in, in talking mm-hmm. about the elements. So for me, it, it starts with how we just leave this out and let the audience fill it in for themselves. So we've provided the structure. <laughs> sure. And everyone else can just kind of fill in. Or that would just be the ultimate tease now. 40, how many minutes in are we? 40. 50 minutes in. We don't actually give them anything <laughs> actionable. So mystifying, be to be <laughs> yes. telling is actually. Yes. So for me, I think it starts with the, the, the characters being proxies for the audience mm-hmm. that we've kind of touched on. And, and, and what I'm talking about is like, let me back up. Um, if I'm a marketer or a salesperson um, and I have to explain a microchip that my company, just to go back to something we've already touched on in this uh, episode, if my company manufactures a microchip that does something you know, very specific, um, it's not even necessarily an end user product. It's just something that goes into something else that someone else can, can use. I know that I'm speaking, one, to the people who who make the bigger thing that this is just a component of. But I'm probably gonna have more of an impact if the way that I tell them about my microchip is at the very least how someone like them might use that microchip. Mm -hmm. What are the features, but more importantly, like what are the benefits? Mm -hmm. If you use this microchip, you only have to take up one slot in your CPU or Mm -hmm. whatever, I don't know, non-nerd alert, I guess, there. Um, But if you just bullet out, like, you know, one CPU slot, um, 52 nanometer, like, all those things. Reckoning this. uh, Yeah, like, okay, fine. It's, I know, I know. I was on on (laughs) GPS, yeah, Yeah. Bluetooth GPS dead reckoning tracker chip. That was probably the coolest name for a project we ever had was Dead Reckoning. Dead Reckoning. That was awesome. Um, But if I can show um, a a human or or 
not even necessarily human, but if I can show how someone would use that and how that might benefit someone. Or, or how it solves their problem. How it solves their problem. How it, if, if my viewer is represented by a character in that story, they're going to be able to identify with it on a deeper level than just getting those bullet, bullet point features. Which is why you whatever. put Jerry uh, Manischewitz and VP product for yeah. company Y. Yeah. Like, that's why you do that. So that someone's like, okay, that is me. That's that is me. what I do. So this person must have similar problems Some relevant, to me. Yep, similar problems. And if I hear them say, my job got easier, then my job might get easier. Right. Um, but I would also challenge, and this is why you see so many, and I bet if we did a Google Trends oh God. against it, you would probably see a very similar curve to the meet Joe mm -hmm. at the beginning of videos. Mm -hmm. the, the intent there is, here's a character that represents you, yeah. my viewer. But it got so, patronizing. so overdone, and it's so patronizing. Like, don't, don't be that guy. Well, because how often do you feel like chipper like like Joe does on screen. He pops up and he's like, ooh, hey. That's how I wake up and greet myself in the morning yeah. in the mirror. Like they do, it was just a poorly done uh, proxy, but, but poorly it, done proxy. But it works, right? Like the idea of storytelling. Conceptually it works. But, but the idea of storytelling took off and passed a critical mass because it gets better results yeah, than yeah, not using yeah, yeah. storytelling. In that sense, yes, it and, works. And, and using a Joe character as a proxy to help tell your story works that much better. Mm -hmm. And so everybody had to do it. And I, I, I get the appeal of that as a um, coming from a more of a creative standpoint than a business outcomes standpoint. I always feel challenged to, you know, okay, what's new? What hasn't been overdone? Mm -hmm. Whatever. Mm -hmm. But I totally understand a whole lot of people who are outcomes focused wanting to use the stuff that works. Mm -hmm. I get that. Um, and there's something to be learned there. But at, at a certain point, it just be like meet Joe at the beginning of a video becomes just as meaningless mm. as storytelling. Yeah. Well, ah, brought it all the way back to the beginning there. Um, as storytelling in like a blog post title mm -hmm. or something like yep. that. Um, so create proxy characters, and, and there are a few ways to do that. So one way is like an aspirational storyline. We talked a little bit about a day in the life kind of thing. You mean, so, so you want to be like that person? I, I want to see this. For, one, I feel like this, I identify with this character, and this person represents me. Mm -hmm. in, in my job, has similar challenges, has, has, you know, whatever. I can identify with this character. And in 30, 60, 90 seconds, I can see them go from where I am Mm -hmm. through that journey facing some obstacles and finding solutions to a new place I want to be in that place I want to have the corner office instead of the cubicle I want to have the time to take a vacation mm -hmm. instead of <clears throat> working overtime every week I want for me what I see them getting by using whatever it is that they decided to use so I'm thinking more of like a scripted mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. right that and a day in the life is the way to do that a kind of you know problem solution result case study type structure mm -hmm. is a way to do that um, but something for for someone to to be able to identify I see myself in that person I see them struggling with the same things I'm struggling with I see that this solution put them here I want to be there so is a proxy character that's not synonymous with aspiration necessarily because I feel like aspiration is I see somebody and I want to be like them whereas a proxy is that is me right there's well, a little bit of there's I, a I mean, nuance I, there I, 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 use, I use proxy for so you know I wrote my note here as proxy characters mm -hmm. but like characters as a proxy for the audience mm -hmm. it, is that full statement yeah. so one of those could be an aspirational storyline where yes Yes. So, so the, the person is like me, and then they do something great. I want to be great too. Yes. Yes. 
But then there's also an aspiration, like a pure aspirational character where they have the life that I want already. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, you see that they use Tide or something. Sure. Like, oh my God, all, their whites are so white and their colors pop. I want, I want that. There's, I mean, there may not be a storyline there, but there is an aspirational character. And that's why you so often see completely unrealistic homes mm -hmm. in, in those commercials, mm -hmm. right? Because, because they know who they're speaking to. Yeah. And they know what kind of kitchen or laundry room and they know that, that person a clean wants to kitchen have. Calms. Yeah. The yes. Viewer. Yes. But if it looked anything like my kitchen or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody has that laundry room. Yeah. But the house we everybody shot in on Tuesday wants, does. But everybody <laughs> wants that laundry yeah. room. Yeah. And so maybe by using Tide Pods, I can get closer to having that laundry room. Mm -hmm. Like the, I, I imagine there's some kind of brain chemistry. You know, like the whole idea of putting something in your cart has the same chemical effect on the brain as actually purchasing mm -hmm. something. I imagine, you know, aspiring to have this amazing laundry room that has Tide Pods in it. If I use Tide Pods, I'm that much closer. Kind of getting. That much closer. Almost, yeah. Because, Step one. Because there are individual elements to that laundry room. Mm -hmm. There's a front-loading washer and, you know... A, Cabinets a, that hide and shit. Cabinets and, and it's and all somebody clean it. windows and windows. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and, and Tide Pods. Mm -hmm. Right? They're not hidden away mm -hmm. in that shot, in right. that ad. Yeah. They're out on the counter. And so, I, you know, shit, I can't put windows in my... Laundry room. I can't keep it clean. I don't have a smiling kid. I don't. I don't have a smiling kid. I don't have like a pantry to put this shit away in. But I can get that orange container that pops out for from like all the super clean white yeah. that my I eye is that. drawn to. Yeah, that's an awful lot of storytelling. I mean, that's that's visual. Yeah, and I mean, the, there's a lot that I, goes I, in I, there. I almost wanted to add that into these notes. It's like, how can you tell stories visually? Yeah. Because there's so much in that, and that could even be perhaps a different well, episode. So, but that may that may address the character part of it. Because I can imagine you could tell a visual story without any external characters, but you're you're actually providing the point of view. <clears throat> so then your viewer is actually Camera. the character, right? Yeah. So if I'm watching, if there's no characters in a laundry room. Mm -hmm. You be uh, I the, the that becomes my eyes. The camera yeah. is now my eyes. Yep. Because there's no one else to focus on. <clears throat> I become the hero. I become the person who has those things. And then, yes, which of the things in this frame can I go get? Yeah, so that's so I'm just kind of experimenting here because I think it's 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 fun for me and I don't give a shit about our <laughs> listeners. I'm just kidding. Um But if that's the case, let's say there's there's no character but there's implications, right? So, um, so yeah, there's nobody in, in frame. It's just a, it's a laundry room. So all of a sudden, that camera becomes my eyes, and I am that person looking in that laundry room. And then I see a pair of dirty pants just laying on the floor. They're sitting there laying on the ground. They're dirty. There's a little bit of dirt around it. You don't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. You don't have to show... The, the husband who left them there but the the if this is targeted the right way to the right viewer the the your audience knows oh, fucking husband never puts his stuff in the laundry basket you don't have to say anything mm -hmm. so visually sto telling that story if if the camera is my eyes and I see those on the ground I might get that little oh, can't you just put your fucking clothes in the laundry basket kind of thing but oh but at least I can have tied mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, there is there could be some I may want a new husband. <laughs> but but yeah, I can get the tie. You can put remnants of characters and never actually have to say yeah. who it was. Well, and, and maybe that's another episode. Maybe visual storytelling is is an entire way to mm -hmm. address how to do it. And 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 because yes, a picture is worth a thousand words. I mm -hmm. mean there's so much you can convey um, in a single still image even that you don't have to say mm -hmm. anything. You don't have to have people in it. Um, you know, the the color grading on a laundry room shot like that is going to tell a different story, mm -hmm. yep. right? If it's blue and cold, um, it's probably a laundry room that, you know, needs some updating. Mm -hmm. But if it's nice and warm and bright, 
then that is the laundry room that I want because mm-hmm. it's clean and it. So it could even be the same shot and just you know the color is is processed differently. Mm-hmm. It tells a different story. <clears throat> Yeah, and all the different types of visual effects you can apply, like a little bit of static or haze or something, makes it. Make- or, or or even or even shallow depth of field. Yeah. Right, drawing the eye. Right, I I, I can recognize an out of focus laundry room, mm-hmm. but if the focus is on the the thing of tide, then that's where. Not only do you usually, because in my mind this is like an all white laundry room, and there's that bright orange canister there Mm -hmm. with like 64 Tide Pods in it, the color difference is going to draw my eye to the product. But if it's a shallow depth of field, I can still get a sense that that's a really nice laundry room. But if I can't focus on the washer or the dryer and all I can focus on is that Tide, that's where my eye goes again. Mm -hmm. And and that's, I think, and, and I imagine when we talk about ways to kind of put in the right structural story elements to get your audience to, to fill in the gaps because we work in video, we know how to do that. And we with we visuals. barely have to articulate it because it's just something we've practiced. So yeah, many times. but like, but we know when to do a shallow depth of field mm-hmm. because we want to focus in a certain place. Mm-hmm. We know when to frame someone somewhere to either say a certain thing or to draw the eye to mm-hmm. a certain place. What we're doing is we're getting them to pay attention to certain things and not to other things mm-hmm. that may still be there because they're not important. It doesn't mean that they shouldn't be there. Well, it's leaving out the but, stuff that you can leave out. Yes. It's a technique that I we get use as visual. I get enough of a sense that I'm in a laundry room mm-hmm. that I don't need to see what model the appliances yep. are. Let's keep moving because all this Tide Pod talk is getting me hungry. So we can I bet. I think we talked a little bit about focusing on benefits over features. To me, that, that was just such a fundamental part of, of any sales training that I went through that I, I sometimes take it for granted. So, you know, features are are the the things that your product or service possesses, right? It's got a a Bluetooth transmitter Mm -hmm. on this microchip. The benefit is that I don't have to use a cellular or Wi-Fi signal, Mm -hmm. um, which is cheaper, you know, and and a Bluetooth signal is cheaper than, so ultimately the benefit is it saves me money. Sure. Um, and, And people are so much more drawn to what it's gonna do for them. Right. Yeah. What's in it for me? What's it yeah. going to do for them? And, and that's why the aspirational stuff works so well. Because they get to see their future self. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about your 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 product, leave the features out altogether uh, when you're really trying to tell a story. I, I mean, you, you could even tell a story that, that focuses solely on benefits, and then at the end you reveal this is the product. Like, somebody can, can you know, get a promotion spend more time with their family, whatever it is they're trying to do in their job. And all you need to to say is they're able to do that because they save their company money. They're able to, you know, get more work done in less of an amount of time. It doesn't even matter what they're doing. And then all of a sudden you reveal at the end, Mm -hmm. monday.com, right, or whatever. Um, Yep, and just brings us back to the manifesto. Ba-bum! We, uh, effective video, effective video helps us achieve our desired future state. Effective video helps our prospects and customers achieve their desired future states. Just a little, little segment there. So precious. I feel like I had to bring it up. Yeah. yeah. Always, always. The manifesto helpful. sticks. It does. I, I was, I was just reviewing the, the copy page for our new site last week and I found nothing I wanted to change. Yeah. I mean, I found something at the end I wanted to change, but like the core principles of it. Yeah. Dead on. So where where might our listeners, if, if they wanted to start using storytelling in their business, where are some of the ways that they can do that? Or what are some of the most accessible ways? And, and then even maybe some unconventional ways to do it. I think a good way to, to, to test it, and I think this goes back somewhat to something we've talked about before about how a lot of <clears throat> uh, marketers or companies new to video want to start with testimonials. Mm-hmm. A lot of it has to do with because they haven't really crafted the messaging and language around their brand or product or service. And it's easier to get people who've used it to talk about how it's worked for them. And in this case, that's a perfectly legitimate source to understand how to tell a story. Use actual users as your characters because Mm -hmm. they're going to be 
a proxy for the audience, right? Like you were saying, VP product marketing or, you know, whatever it is. So that when, uh, what was it, Jerry Manischewitz? <clears throat> Jerry Manischewitz, VP product. Well, if I'm targeting it correctly, then I'm probably going to have a lot of VPs of product watching this video. Mm -hmm. So even though he's not a fictional character, mm -hmm. he's someone that I can identify with. And I'm going to be interested in what his problem was, what the solution they found, and what the results were mm -hmm. for him. And so, you know, I would, when conducting that interview, I would make sure to ask, and how has this benefited your company? How has this benefited you in your role? Mm -hmm. right? How has this benefited your department? Yep. Make sure you get that part. You know, you, you certainly you want to cover, like, how they use it. But you want to make sure you get where did you end up? Mm-hmm. Because the where did you end up part is is the part that you then bring back to your original normal. Mm -hmm. That makes it better. Yeah, how is your life different now? Yes. Um, so I think that's a fantastic way to develop your brand's messaging as well as start to understand how to tell stories. And like you said, our San Francisco interviews are 45 minutes each. And we cut out, I don't know what percentage that would be, but we cut these things down to a, a minute and a half. Yeah. So you're going to learn... You know, it's not just about finding sound bites, you know, the most concise way that they said a certain thing, but it's, well, how much of this information do I really need mm -hmm. to say what needs to be said here? But this is also why we say shorter videos should often be more expensive because it takes more work. It's not just taking things away for the case of taking things away, for it's the sake of taking things. It's making an effective short it's video. It's this is, this piece with this piece says these things. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, yeah. what... Do you have any examples off the top of your head that someone might check out as a good example for, um, like, a customer story? I mean, I think stuff on our site is great, the stuff that we've done. Um, but where, like, what other brands do that well? I've got one, but I want you to go first. Okay. Well, I think back to one of the places we learned about storytelling early on uh, was from Still Motion. Uh-huh. And that that story about the little kid who sold lemonade, I think mm -hmm. it was, yep. just out of the goodness of her heart to help cancer patients. No, it was um, it was um, uh, youth slave workers. Oh, in, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the Nepal or something. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, that's what it was. Um, I, I and so I don't remember the story as well. But it was it was a it was a it was for a brand. The mm -hmm. brand was like a lemonade or popsicle brand or something like that, um, but just like the the techniques that they imply are, are, are empl employ are fantastic. And I think anything from Still Motion, I would recommend checking them out. Yeah. What about like maybe a scripted storytelling kind of? I think Sandwich Video does amazing scripted stuff. They're so good at being efficient. I mean, some of their stuff is better than uh, their early stuff, <laughs> like like any good band. Their early stuff is just phenomenal. Has soul. But you can see that they're, that they're trying to connect with their viewers. Um, they're trying to put the viewers either on the stool across from the person they're playing the trivia game mm -hmm. from or, um, or in the office where they're using Slack. Like they're so good at at putting the that was a good storyteller the Slack video that is that is a good one too because that that's them adopting a technology that's them using themselves yep. as that aspirational character like here's where we were here's all the things we were using mm -hmm. which are things that almost every small medium enterprise size business is patching together yeah here's when we went to this and here's what happened. And in the middle, there was a whole bunch of stuff about how individual characters with different jobs used it differently. Mm -hmm. And so they got just a sense of of not just... No, that was a, a brand, a broad brand awareness campaign. Mm -hmm. So they were speaking to a broader audience. But there was, there was a character in there for anyone to kind of latch on to, mm -hmm. to say, oh, I have that job. I could totally use some help doing mm -hmm. that. This does that also. And then you've got, you know, the person at the top of the chain says, oh, well, this person, this person, this person, and this person all told me that, you know, they could do their job better if we apply this one product. I better get that for mm -hmm. my team. One video that we've done that kind of incorporates a lot of things we've been talking about today 
is the meet Joe fuck Joe. I know. I, I know that. Because it, that... it makes fun of the meet Joe uh, archetype. It uses various characters that can all see the value of the contract management platform that yep. it's, it's promoting. A hero character. A hero. Who also has to deal with all of those other mm -hmm. characters. And it makes her the hero of the story because she's the one who says, it we need to be using this. It makes all of people happy. And it makes all of these other people happy. Mm-hmm. Um, no, and, and, and that's really why, you know, Don't Meet Joe is here. Mm -hmm. And, of course, yes. So that is for, you know, for our... And, and that is, you know, honestly the video that we get the most unsolicited feedback on. And I don't think it's because of the bleeped fuck. I think it's because people get that it's a satirical look at, mm -hmm. you know, video marketing mm -hmm. uh, of the last five years or whatever. I think our, our, our customer stories for Transperfect over the last couple of years have have done that and, and they do it with, you know, using a a customer testimonial and using a lot of visual storytelling mm -hmm. through animations, mm -hmm. right? Around those people. Um, to to fill in a lot of the gaps. But if you look at the the illustration style, it's it's line drawing style. It's mm -hmm. there's not they're very flat. Mm -hmm. So we're 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 letting the person um, we're letting the person say the minimal amount that we need them to say. We're using the animations around them to fill in some it's of those gaps. Context. But we're still leaving enough to be filled in because they're just two D line drawings. Mm -hmm instead of like 3D representations mm -hmm. of, the iconographic. of the things, right? Yeah. yeah. And so it gives you an idea of a desktop monitor with a whole bunch of cells in a spreadsheet without actually showing you a desktop monitor, but you still get it, but you get to kind of, wow, those are actually better than I realized they are. We, 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 you know, we did that really well. Like mm -hmm. we left enough mm -hmm. to the imagination, but at multiple layers. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why those things put out so much information in that short period of time. But, you know, ultimately, whether you're writing a blog or a brochure, uh, or a website, or creating video, if we bring it back to video, that's where you get to show and tell, right? So you have the opportunity to do both at the same time and leverage, don't underestimate your audience, leverage their brain power mm -hmm. to process visual images while they're listening to what's being said. One, so we did talk about customer stories. Another way to get started and start telling stories within your your company from a marketing perspective or just from PR, or whatever. Um, even even in a sales role, like role, there's a lot of power in telling the story of your, of your business, mm -hmm. the founder's story, their inspiration, um, what their brand is all about, what it stands for, what their mission is, how they're changing the world. Those kinds of things are great. Those, that could all be in one video or ten. Sure, and so much of that goes to the Simon Sinek why, yes. right? People yeah, yeah, don't yeah. buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And those founders' stories, those about us company stories, the best ones aren't about who we are. They're about why we're doing this. Yeah. You know, our dad was a shipbuilder, and we were both, you know, working on Wall Street. Our dad passed away, and we decided to leave Wall Street and, you know, refurbish our dad's shipbuilding business or mm -hmm. you know handcrafted wooden boats i've always still wanted to do a video for a hand like a handcrafted wooden boats mm -hmm. company but like that gives me a connection to 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 that brand and that company that i wouldn't have if i was just looking at you know what boats were available to purchase mm -hmm. um from their site and so that gives me a you know who does a great job of those and it's, it's actually a mixture of a customer story and a brand why. Well, I know Yeti does a really That's good job. That's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah. They have dozens and dozens of these things, and they're all really good. Some of them are fake and funny, mm -hmm. like mockumentary style, and some of them are like make you cry, and they all touch on that same that 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 same why. Yeah. Let's say this is the first time, or maybe you've been hearing about storytelling, but like everybody else, you just kind of zone out when you hear it or, or gloss over it. Um, and you, you, you decided to take a chance on this podcast. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. Where can what can somebody do? Are there source like resources they can access, or places to go, or people to talk to, um, influencers to follow that can dis, who, can teach them more about storytelling, or like how do we 
how do we let you know give them something give our listeners like the next step I, you know I don't know because I don't <sighs> is it pra- is it just practicing it's practicing but it's also there's like there's only so much I think storytelling is one of those things that becomes so personal that once you understand kind of the fundamentals it's like compositing a shot you need to learn the rule of thirds so that you know when to break the rule of thirds you Mm -hmm. need to know the 180 degree rule so that you know when to break the 180 Mm -hmm. degree rule um so for me i don't spend nearly as much time looking into how to tell stories because i spent so much time trying to figure out how to tell stories in you know the the early 20 teens or mm-hmm. whatever um, and those fundamentals are enough that you then just evolve it into your own storytelling style mm-hmm. so I honestly I, I can only draw on still motion a story and heart um, I think Tony Zhu's um, uh, every frame a painting uh, nerd writers video essays mm. some of those things are just so they use a particular director or film to focus on a super specific element of storytelling, they're maybe a little bit more advanced. Um, but like that's who I used, but it gave me enough of the foundation to say, okay, this is how I want to tell my stories. And I know I need to do this, this, and this. And then I can just learn a whole of a whole lot of other things that I can steal, like an artist, from other people. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know who's out in front on that today, to be perfectly honest. Uh, do you? I mean, I can't necessarily. Like so many people are saying the same thing. I do, I do think that the most important thing is for you to try it yourself. Yeah. Uh, National Storytelling Network, storynet.org, seems to be a perfectly valid source. I mean, if you want to get to know the basics, there's you can go very academic and read Hero with a Thousand Faces. Yeah. But that is... Thick. But I also think Dicks. if if they've if they've certainly gotten to this point in this episode, they've learned everything they need to know. <laughs> they've they know the things to Google that they want to get more specific in. Yeah. Right? Like so, you know, imagination and storytelling, storytelling structure, um, storytelling characters, hero and guide, those kinds of elements that we've already laid out, um, and my guess is there are two or three top sources that are talking about all of those things. Mm-hmm. I just don't know who those people are anymore, and maybe they're the same people who were, you know, in 2012, 13, 14. Um, but, but that's all I've got. So I, I'd love to, for anybody who is following someone who's, who's big on, on storytelling and, and marketing and, and that kind of stuff, I'd love to hear, you know, from our audience mm-hmm. who they like because I think it's always it's – always in- it's all about – getting more perspectives on the craft Mm -hmm. but it's still once you kind of get those basics i think you just start to make it your own but part of making it your own is is hearing and seeing what other people do Mm um yeah well should we uh hear another frightening message from our sponsor yeah our terrifying but well-paying new sponsor covid 20 I'm coming for the rest of y'all motherfuckers. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the world again, boom. Say goodbye to COVID-19 and hello to COVID-20. Dropping everywhere, winter 2020. We're all going to die. <laughs> We're all going to die. Um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so when are we seeing this sandstorm show up? Sandstorm uh, here, probably in the next three, four days. Okay. It should just all it's really going to give us is really good. It's going to be high atmosphere, and it's actual point. sand particles. It's, like it's dust sand part. from the Sahara. It has come across the Atlantic just like hurricanes do, on the same jet Trade stream, winds or ship, yeah. whatever. But now it's so high in the atmosphere that it's, we're really only going to see it uh, sunsets and sunrises. So you're probably going to see a lot of Instagram sunsets mm-hmm. over the you know over the weekend, and you know just another sign that we're all going to die because mm-hmm. the, the sky will go red like blood mm-hmm. and we won't, we won't see the moon for 40 nights and yeah welcome to welcome to 2020 
Wait, wasn't the uh, Mayan like wasn't that around now, or is that a couple days ago? Did we did we made it? It was through? it was the solstice, so it was like Saturday. Oh, okay. Yeah. The God, that was that was one of my favorite articles that I've seen recently. The recalculation of the Mayan calendar. Oh no, wait, it was eight and a half years off. So it's going to be Saturday. It's it's <laughs> it's like Parks and Rec. It's like the Doomsday Cult in Parks and Rec, where they're like, well, the world didn't end. Well, you know, I've done some recalculations and. Uh, World's going to end on May 23rd. She's like, oh, I'm sorry, the park's booked. Oh, uh, May 25th. <laughs> yep, park's available. All right, great. I'd like a permit for the park on May 25th. Um, all right, well, that is episode 31 of the Video Reformation Podcast. Thanks so much for listening and watching and uh, sending your fan mail to us. Um, uh, the cash is greatly... Um, we don't even use chairs anymore in our office. We just sit. We're just on sitting piles on piles of cash. cash. Yeah. So keep it coming, because um, you know we need a we need a cash chair for our guests. Mm-hmm. It's gonna go right here. Mm-hmm. So we're working on cash pile number three. Um, it's only funny <laughs> because it's not true. It's not true. Um, all right. Well, I think I think it's time for. For our closeout banter now. So, okay. So I imagine the music started already. I think so. Is that wait? Yep. No, they're 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 slow queuing up the music, so we got to stretch. Something it. about they oh yeah, the stretch. recalculating of uh, the Mayan calendar. Um, there's this guy on TikTok called 2028 Man, mm-hmm. and he's a funny looking guy, um, who's from 2028. Sure. And he. I think he seriously believes like he he seriously he believes it. Um, it's predicted a whole bunch of things. I can't wait to see what happens. Supposedly there's a, a hurricane Kyle that's gonna be like twice as bad as. Oh, I heard about that. Okay, you have. Yeah. What? 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 <laughs> or or uh, or maybe I just saw that the, the list of hurricane names this year Kyle is. But he says something like August. There's a lot of people who believe that time travel will never